Hey everybody, this is Lauren with Leatherati.com and we are here today with the brand new title holders for International Leather Sir and Boy, International Leather Sir Alan Penrod, and International Leather Boy Pup Nitro for 2011. Nice to see you guys, how are you? Doing great, good to see you too. You were busy in San Francisco. <laughs> yes, we were. It was a fast-paced weekend. Congratulations on the titles. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a, uh, everyone was great. Some really good contestants from around the world, but uh, you guys definitely came out on top and we're pleased to have you with us here today. So, uh, tell us, what have you been doing since the contest? Winding down a little. <laughs> eating. Eating. <laughs> eating a lot. <laughs> and uh, trying to get our uh, travel calendar set up for the upcoming year. Where are some of the places that you're looking to go first? Um, well, our first trip is going to be the Trident Nights run in Augusta, and our first out-of-state trip is going to be Seattle for the Northwest Regional Contest on Labor Day weekend. And lots of uh, local stuff in the southeast. I'm sure you guys are just busy all over down there. Absolutely. We're, we're very involved in our region here, so it'll be uh, fun to mix all that in. And you're doing double duty. Not only are you the current title holders for the international system, you're also the producers for a region as well, right? Absolutely. We took over the southeast region, uh, producing that uh, as of August 1st. Your contest is coming up soon. Yes. Uh, September 30th and October 1st uh, is going to be Southeast Black and Blue Weekend. We have actually combined it with what was formerly Southeast Rubber Weekend to have one large leather fetish BDSM weekend at the Atlanta Eagle. So we will have Southeast Leather Sir, Southeast Leather Boy, Southeast Community Boot Black, and Mr. Southeast Rubber contests going on with uh, judges coming in from around the country for it. That's awesome. That's a great weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a good lineup. Good lineup. Now, for people out there that have been living under a rock somewhere and don't know what the uh, Leather Sir Boy circuit is about, can you tell us what the you know where the where the contest came from and, and, and what it's grown into today? You know, the great thing about the uh, ILSB track is that it is a player's title, and it originated from the uh, drummer international drummer and drummer boy contests. Um, when those contests uh, went under in 2001, uh, the, then uh, changed names to International Leather Sir, Leather Boy. Um, and then they brought the boot black in uh, the following year in 2002, oh, two, 2003. And when you, may, when you say a player's title, can you explain what that means? It celebrates our leather sexuality. Um, what it is to be uh, a leather man, to have leather sex, and BDSM uh, style of play. We need more of that. We need a lot more of that. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. A lot more of that. Now, so this title is, is very fitting for us. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're talking about play and players' titles and stuff, that fantasy you guys did, that rocked. <laughs> <laughs> it was the funnest part of my weekend. <laughs> I mean, like you, I, I, I see a lot of fantasies, different contests and stuff, and i got to tell you, that one really got my attention and everyone else's attention, too. Can you give us a little bit of background about how you came up with that and, and how, you, uh, how long it took you to put that together? Yeah, we worked on that for about eight months. Um, and actually, it all began watching So You Think You Can Dance. But don't tell anybody. <laughs> but don't tell anybody that. <laughs> i got to see where this goes. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, well, we kind of have a vice in our house. We, we really love So You Think You Can Dance because, well, quite frankly, the boys are fucking hot. Um, and last year, there was a, a routine they did and had that piece of music on it. Destructive so, drums. Called Destructive Drums. And we knew right then, we, we had been trying to think of what to do for our fantasy scene, and we knew right then that was our music. Had no idea what we were going to do with it, but that was our music. So we had a friend of ours that found it uh, for us, found the clean version, and then we wrote the fantasy scene around it and spent about eight months from start to finish of 
writing it and running through it and had Slave Scott watching us and directing us um, to help us out with it and then ended up in San Francisco with it. So, Yeah, we wrote the script about six months beforehand because our, um, our theme was uh, role play. And so because I have this this role play and this this fetish for prison scenes, it, it became pretty natural that that pretty obvious that that was what we were going to do. It was just building the the fantasy around that piece of music, which really turned out to be a, a fantastic piece of music for us. And our other favorite show is Jail on Spike TV. So we got plenty of ideas from that, and then found a, a distributor online that would sell the gear to to civilians, and then we were good to go. <laughs> I really wanted a restraint chair, but I could not, not happen. <laughs> I really wanted him in a restraint chair, but I only had five minutes for the fantasy, so it wasn't going to work. <laughs> and that's a tough carry-on item, too. Yeah, it is a tough one to carry on. <laughs> I think TSA may have an issue with that one. Nitro, what was going through your mind when you saw that you, you got to spit square in uh, Sir Alan's face? Actually, um... There's when, where the fantasy came in. That's... <laughs> That's where the fantasy and the role play came in. Uh, when when Sir wrote that into the script and handed it to me, I believe my exact words were, Sir, with all due respect, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> that is not something I would ever live to tell the tale about. So, yeah, um, I wasn't sure how to handle that one. Um, and, and it took Slave Scott about a month and a half of working with me on it to make it look real because I was so terrified to do it. <laughs> That he might actually do it. <laughs> and the practice must have been hell, too, I'm sure. Yeah, our downstairs neighbors were just not happy with us for a while. Um, he's a, yeah. We, we didn't get any notes on the door, so that's a good thing, but it was a lot of fun doing it. Let him wear your medallion for a day. Maybe that'll make it up to him. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was very impressive. Congratulations. That, that was really well done. You know, the other thing I thought was especially well done about your performance in San Francisco uh, were your speeches. It, it takes a, a you know, rare talent to put together a speech that really comes from the heart. Um, can you speak a little bit about how you, how you came to do those and, and, and what they meant to you? Uh, the concept of mine came from giving boys a voice um, and making sure that boys do have a voice, uh, not only in the home, but in the community that they serve, and that was the premise behind my speech. Um, I began working on that several months beforehand, and then, of course, taking a five-minute speech and bringing it down to a minute and 45 seconds, but, you know, getting all those thoughts congealed into a, into a single message. And what was really interesting for us, and, and it just kind of shows that after five years of being together, we're even more in sync than we thought, is that in listening to our speeches back to back, it almost sounded like we sat down and wrote them together on, on a computer together. Um, we actually wrote those completely separately, um, a few days apart from each other, and then after we were finished, we swapped and let the other read them. And actually, that was the last time that we read them until uh, that night. We didn't read them out loud to each other uh, or anything like that, so the, those emotions were, were very real um, that transpired there. Well, they were incredibly cohesive. They really looked like they were two parts of one entity, and it was amazing how, how it came across. Thank you. Thanks. What were your uh, biggest surprises about the contest? Um, personally, mine was just how emotional of an experience it was. Um, the, you, there's so much crammed into such a small time frame and it really forces you to look inside yourself and you learn a whole lot about yourself in those two or three days. And because of that, it's, there's some emotional ups and downs with it in a very good way and a very, very positive way. Um, so that I didn't really anticipate as as strongly as it actually happened. I mean, you've both been on stages before. 
So sure. you know you've had that experience before. This it seemed like this was definitely more emotional for you. It was, yeah. yeah. Um, and the other factor is actually getting to share this with Sir Alan. Um, that there's not many many systems out there that you can actually share an experience like this with someone uh, who's very close to you. And so that added a whole nother element to it. Yeah, that made it very, very unique for me. I competed in IML in 2009. Um, and this experience was, was much different than that. Um, of course, the contest weekend seemed to just fly by with this one. Uh, but we had an opportunity to really grow together through the process of preparing for the contest for the past year and then doing basically everything together this weekend was a really nice, nice way to, to enter and, and compete in the contest. And now you've got a year of uh, travel and appearances <laughs> and work and oh my God, who's going who's gonna to mind the home fires while you're doing all this? That's going to fall to my other boy, Scott. <laughs> uh, I want to ask a couple questions about that because a lot of people out there are curious about polyamorous and, and, and poly families and multi-unit families. How did yours come to be and, and what's been uh, the secret to making it work for you? Um, Slave Scott was actually um, a friend of ours for about a year and a half. We had uh, met him through our, um, our Hotline of Rubber Club. And uh, the relationship kind of just grew naturally out of that out of that initial friendship. Um, for anybody that is considering or um, uh, curious about getting into a a triad or polyamorous relationship, uh, the biggest piece of advice I can give them is make sure those lines of communication are opened. Yeah and uh, that you check your jealousy at the door because jealousy is something that doesn't work in this type of uh, relationship at all. Right. 